They're so beautiful, aren't they, folks? Such a spectacular little critter. Wow. What's gonna happen if I touch it? Oh, I don't know. My name is Jack, and I've spent the past few years traveling all over the globe to find some of nature's most unique and most dangerous animals. My goal? To show the world that even the most bizarre or perhaps even deadly life forms on Earth deserve both our respect and our appreciation. Now, this mission has pushed me to explore some of the more prevalent myths and misconceptions about our fantastic natural world, and today's adventure is no different. Today, we find ourselves in the dense jungles of lowland Ecuador on the hunt for one of the most famous groups of amphibians on Earth, poison dart frogs. Today, I'm hoping to shed a little light on these beautiful little frogs, as well as answer the question of what happens should you touch one of these toxic creatures. Let's dive right in. Okay, friends, so something not only unusual, but really, really special has happened. We have been granted special access to come out here to find easily one of my favorite, if not honestly my favorite frogs on Earth. The little devil poison frog, Ufaga sylvatica, the Diablito. Now, I can already hear them calling. So we're going to get looking, we're going to get searching, and we're going to see if we can not only find one of these super rare poison frogs, but uh, I'm going to answer the question for you all. What happens if you touch a poison dart frog? Interested to find out? Well, we're going to get uh, searching around and we'll see if we can find one of these amazing little devil poison frogs. After just a few minutes of listening closely, we heard the telltale quack-like call of the frogs we were after. Step one is complete. We know where they are. Now the much more difficult step is to catch one without it darting away into the leaf litter. Okay, so right now... We're just hiking through some of this beautiful rainforest. I believe I can hear some of these beautiful, beautiful poison dart frogs just up ahead. So we're gonna see if I can get my eyes on these calling males or at least one calling male. I'll see if I can capture one. Oh man, the blood's pumping. I'm so excited, folks. This is really a dream come true to see Vaga sylvatica out here in the wild. So I'm gonna hike around and Tensions are high until we get one of these beautiful frogs. Finally, I spot a male that I think I can get close enough to, to capture. my friends easily not only one of my favorite species of poison dart frog but absolutely one of my favorite localities this right here is the little devil poison frog or the diablito now we are here in some beautiful lowland forests here in ecuador and we have been given special permission to come out here and film these spectacular poison frogs we saw a few kind of you know, hopping around in the leaf litter and the bramble patches. Uh, but uh, now we've got one in hand. Absolutely spectacular. This is a gorgeous frog, an immaculate male. And uh, I'm pretty freaking excited. Whoa! <laughs> 
Now you may note that these frogs are quite brightly colored. Now this is not a great way to remain camouflaged in the rainforest, right? Well, these frogs employ aposematic coloration, AKA warning colors. Now these colors let potential predators know that these animals are poisonous and will not be a safe or easy meal. Surprisingly, they can still be hard to spot among the fallen limbs and leaf litter under the canopy. So I was so excited to find this male and capture him. All right, so we've got our beautiful male little devil poison frog. Now these are striking. They have those bright colors, that high contrast of black and red, and that helps to warn predators, to let them know that these frogs are poisonous. You would not want to be out here in the jungle and feed on one of these frogs. You could be very, very, very sick, or perhaps in some cases, even die. These poison frogs are no joke, folks, but these animals are super fantastic and important in these ecosystems. They feed on a variety of small invertebrates, and that's actually what gives them their toxins. A whole slew, hundreds of species of mites and ants and all sorts of other tiny little invertebrates feed on many toxic plants here in the rainforest. And these frogs have evolved and adapted in order to sequester, in order to take for themselves those toxins to use in their own defense, which is just so spectacular because it can be a pretty dangerous place out here in the rainforest. If you don't have something to protect you or camouflage or something like that, you can become an easy snack for a whole host of creatures out here. So these frogs have made quick and efficient work of finding an amazing defense mechanism. Now, you may be asking yourself at home, what happens should you touch a poison dart frog? Well, this species here, it's not quite as toxic as the golden arrow frogs, but uh, let's see. Let's just see what happens. Got my little container here. My lovely, lovely little frog. Let's see if I can get this guy out. Oi, easy. As you can see here, I'll leave this container accessible. I don't want to lose my little friend. So right here, look at that. Wow gonna happen if I touch it. Oh, I don't know. Take a look here, folks. Let this frog... <gasps> oh, oh, it's already burning my hands. It's, it's, it's killing me. It's destroying my cells. Oh, I'm kidding, folks. I'm kidding. I got you again, didn't I? These lovely little poison dart frogs are not nearly as toxic as some of their other South American cousins. These lovely little frogs here, they might make you sick if you swallow one, uh, but other than that, skin-to-skin -skin contact is not gonna be dangerous with this species here. So as long as I don't rub my eyes or, you know, intravenously inject this frog into my body, which so far I'm not planning on doing, I am really in no real harm. In fact, this glove that I'm wearing here is not for my safety, it's for it little guy's safety right here. Frogs have incredibly sensitive skin and we have all sorts of sweat and oils. I wiped my hand on all this leaf litter before I put this guy on my hand just to protect him from some of those salts and oils that are always residual on human skin. But look at that. Is that not just so spectacular? I am like absolutely floored that we were able to get this get this permission to come in here and handle and film these frogs. This has just been absolutely spectacular. I never could have imagined being here and getting to film with one of my favorite species of amphibians on earth. These have a really special and dear place in my heart. And this is actually a species that I used to keep in my own personal collection and breed as well. So to see them in the wild in their natural environment, mating and calling and hunting for food. It's just so rewarding. It's such a dream come true. No, no, no. Get away from my friend, Mosquito. Take a look at this frog. They're so beautiful, aren't they, folks? Such a spectacular little critter. Although these frogs aren't capable of killing a human being, that's not always the case in regards to dart frogs. 
just a few hundred miles south lives the golden arrow frog, which is more than capable of killing a human being with just skin to skin contact in as little as 20 minutes. Now that's a frog I wouldn't go out of my way to touch. Yikes. Now what makes this encounter even more special is that these frogs, all dart frogs, are restricted to the Neotropics. These frogs don't range anywhere outside of Central and South America. Additionally, this species is entirely restricted to South America. And these forests that we're in, only place you can find this locality, this color morph of this beautiful and spectacular little frog. These animals are so specific in their environment, in their ecosystem, that they are very, very, very affected by climate change and deforestation. If these forests go, these frogs don't really live anywhere else, and they would have an extremely hard time adapting to a new environment or even new forest, even if we were able to preserve the species and move them elsewhere. That's why I want to emphasize so much that it's so important to protect our natural wild spaces because we could lose these fantastic little creatures like these little devil poison frogs just from losing a few really important hectares of forest. These are such spectacular little animals and we would hate to lose them. They're so beautiful. I mean, where else could you go in the world to find a frog that looks like it's made out of lava rock? They're such spectacular little frogs. Let's see if I can get him to crawl back onto my hand here. Oh, here he comes. I'm getting paralyzed. I'm getting paralyzed. Look at that. Oh, that's so much fun. Like I said, not too long. I don't want him to linger on that hand because I want to protect this beautiful little frog. Wow. This is seriously a dream come true, folks. All right, so we're gonna return this beautiful little poison dart frog into its amazing natural habitat right where I found it. So come with me, folks. We're going on an, a little adventure further into the jungle. Oh. All right, now when I saw this beautiful little male here, he was perched right on this stick, calling his heart out for a female. So I'm just gonna place him right back on this little stick here. You're home. Wow, this has truly been the adventure of a lifetime. As someone who's not only just a gigantic fan of frogs, but specifically of this genus Ufaga, and even more specifically of this exact species, Ufaga sylvatica, one of the most beautiful, large, obligate egg-feeding dart frogs in the world, this has just been, wow. I could, you could not have told me that this was gonna be how today was gonna go. I am so excited that we were able to come here and have this absolutely fantastic, fantastic experience. And we were able to get in here and capture so much about these frogs. So my friends, I think our time has come to an end, but I hope you enjoyed being able to be included on this amazing privilege that we've been able to come out here and get hands on and on the ground with these fantastic frogs. So my friends, if I leave you with anything, I hope I can leave you with this. The world is full, oh, he's coming back. The world is full of amazing diversity. These jungles are absolutely filled to the brim with an amazing diversity of life. Every single organism in this forest from these lovely little, little frogs all the way up to the monkeys and tapirs and all sorts of other creatures that call these rainforests home, they each play a vitally important role in maintaining the health of not only this particular ecosystem, but the health of our world as a whole. So my friends, whether it's a creepy crawly spider or a beautiful and magnificent whale, I hope that my videos here are showing you to appreciate from every single direction, whether it's ants, whether it's orangutans. I don't care. So I hope that these videos help to culture and appreciation and respect for even some of our more forgotten groups of animals, like these tiny little frogs in a far off country of Ecuador. So thank you all for tuning in today. I hope that you learned something. I hope you enjoyed this adventure at least half as much as I enjoyed filming it. And uh, I hope to see you next week with the next upload. So until then, take care of yourselves. I'll see you next Friday.